When I went to Japan, it was interesting to hear that Toshiki's squat program was actually very similar to mine. His squat program is basically 75 to 85 percent five by five, followed by 50 percent three sets of 10 five times per week. He used to do um, five times a week, he would do five by five, and then after that he would do uh, three sets of 10, but just with one minute, one minute rest in between. He said there was no peaking phase, basically nothing, simply just doing five by five and adding more and more weight each session. Eventually, he just rested after training like that for a long time and went for a water max and got new PRs. He said he did something like 250 to 260 for five sets of five multiple times before squatting 320. Quite interesting um, because my squat program was very similar. Didn't have any peaking phase and yeah, I did the five by five a lot. So this is basically my program if I had to write it down. So you can see here, I basically squatted every single day. So before I talk about this program, it's important to mention that this is how I squatted in the past. It doesn't mean that you should squat like this or it's the best approach for you. This is probably the best way to injure yourself. I don't recommend you follow this program. This is day one. Did basketball five by five, of course. Um, the program was one to five weeks long, usually. Sometimes it would be as short as like two or three weeks. And then I'll test my water max. And you can see I added in um, the Olympic lifts I did. Because the back squats are so tiring, I wasn't able to do much Olympic lifting. So I just tried to maintain it as best as possible. I just put in RPE values here. So I put eight to 9.5. Um, I didn't follow RPE at the time. <laughs> not even sure like RPE existed back then as like a concept. Maybe it did, but not many lifters used that at all. But yeah, this is the RPE if I had to put in an RPE. I didn't follow, um, I didn't use any percentages as well. I just chose a way I could do for five sets of five with not much difficulty. So maybe for the first set, it would be RP8. And then by the like, last set, it'd be RP9.5. I would always try to avoid RP10 sets because I believe they're very fatiguing. So day one, back squat five by five. Day two, the, the next day, no, no rest day. So I put in example days here, Monday, Tuesday. So Monday, five by five, Tuesday, five by five, Wednesday, five by five again. So after three days of squatting in a row, which is something uh, I used to do, sometimes I would actually do four days of squatting in a row. Um, but yeah, the last day it would obviously be more difficult. So that would be the challenge. Um, usually I just keep the weight the exact same for um, all these days, uh, the three days. So the last day would be more challenging. And then usually I take like um, a day off. So on the program here, it's written Thursday day off. Uh, I'd recover a bit and on day five, Friday here, um, I'd feel stronger, like much stronger compared to uh, day one, day two and day three. So for example, if I did uh, something like 130 kilos, five by five for day one to day three and there wasn't any RP10 sets, it wasn't that difficult, but was difficult enough, then I would predict I'd be able to do 135 on day five here, no problem. Since uh, I was able to do 130 kilos five by five on Wednesday, day three, like under fatigued conditions. So that's what I usually do. I try to do like um, the same weight, like three days in a row and then take a day off and then uh, try to bump up the weight for the next day. Then on day six, I try to do the same weight as day five. Um, of course, I'd auto regulate as well. Maybe it wouldn't be the same way, maybe it'd be slightly less or slightly more depending on how I felt. Of course, there's always like Olympic lifts on all these days and sometimes i'd have to take like a, a lighter day so here for day seven i wrote down 65 percent of my best squat three sets of five so just give myself a rest from like uh, squatting so heavy for five by five not exactly a day off um there's still olympic lifts here as well of course i talk about this program in more detail along with all the programs i followed in my newest ebook Clarence Kennedy's Weightlifting 
history. In the book, I explain the programs I followed for the past 15 years and the advantages and disadvantages of each. Some of the topics covered include my training before weightlifting, my experience training in Poland, how I corrected technical errors, natty versus enhanced training, and the program I followed to snatch 195 kilos. If you'd like a deep insight into my training and apply the principles I've learned, then this is the perfect ebook for you. There are also many lifting programs on my website, such as the 15 week weightlifting program and the powerlifting program. There's also a squat program, which is what I recommend people to follow. It's a lot safer than squatting five by five every day. It's still hard though. You can't get away from training hard. So I didn't really follow or write down what I did like during this time uh, for a lot of my weightlifting career. Actually, I didn't write down anything. Like this may seem like a huge mistake not to write down what you're doing. But I think like tracking what you're doing like all the time is kind of overrated. And also I did have like some structure to my training. I would train consistently at the same time every day and the same number of sessions per week. I would simply just memorize what I did and then alter like the program in my head. I just wouldn't write down anything. So obviously the primary focus of this program was squatting. And of course I did Olympic lifts like I mentioned. I definitely like alternated between periods of focusing on my squat and improving my Olympic lifts. And this is what I did when I was young. I just squatted a lot. It was increasing my squat that allowed me to progress quickly in the Olympic lifts. Like I used um, this program in short bursts. Then I would just focus less on squatting and more on the Olympic lifts. Like because this program was so difficult, it wasn't possible to focus on much Olympic lifting. So I basically tried to match my Olympic lifting numbers to my squat numbers. For example, at one point my squat was 185 kilos and I could snatch 112.5 and clean jerk 140. You can go back uh, to my old YouTube videos and actually find those videos. So my thought at the time was if I could squat 200 kilos, then I should be able to snatch 120 and clean jerk 150. And that's pretty much what I did. I increased my squat to 200 kilos and I got those two numbers. Um, worked well. So I just repeated this method until it stopped working. Like it worked all the way up to 230 kilos squat where I snatched 140 kilos and clean jerked 170 kilos and also cleaned 180 kilos. I then used this like same method later on in my career uh, with the now famous five by five pause squat videos on my YouTube channel. So the idea was to spend a short period of time focusing on squatting maintain this new squatting strength as best as possible, and then shift the focus on more practice with the Olympic lifts. So with this method, I was able to add 10 kilos to my squat in a short period of time, uh, usually two to four weeks at times. So this is the squat program with actual examples. This is when I brought my squat from 180 kilos to 190 kilos, and it took me around three weeks to do that. So to choose a weight for the program, I chose a weight for five by five that was heavy, but comfortable for me where form would not break down significantly, avoiding RP10 sets basically. Uh, this was the key to progress with the program. If I chose a weight too heavy and performed many RP10 sets, then injuries would be more likely and fatigue would certainly accumulate. The chosen weight was 150 kilos. So this was uh, an RP8, the RP9 weight, I guess, to, to begin with. So when I squatted like this, I auto-regulated a lot. If I struggled with a warm weight, then I would just have a lighter day. So you can see here, day one, back squat, week one, uh, 150 kilos, five by five. Tuesday would increase the weight by five kilos, but only do three sets of five because if I continued doing um, two more sets of five at the same weight, uh, it would be too difficult. So there'd be too many like RP10 uh, lifts. Uh, day three, try to do 155 for five sets of five. Of course, this would be a very difficult day because of the accumulated fatigue from day one and day two. So after that, took a day off, came back to the gym, did five by five again with the same weight, 155 kilos. But this time it was way easier than day three. 
Day six, I attempted to add another five kilos, but didn't do the full five by five with 160 kilos. Day seven, felt very tired, so just went and did 120 kilos, three sets of five. And then day one, week two, felt more fresh, was able to do 165 by five, and basically just repeated this process until I was able to do 165 five by five, three days in a row almost. And at that point, I was very confident to squat 190 kilos. And that's what I did here on day seven. And you can kind of see um, <laughs> this mini taper before the water max. So yeah, that was how I squatted when I was younger. So this sounds great, right? But what are the drawbacks? I'd say this is a high risk, high reward program. You can make serious progress, but it can also lead to some serious <laughs> overuse injuries. This program worked extremely well for me because I'm probably, I don't know, genetically more resistant to injury than others. Like I had a friend with average genetics try to style of programming um, at one point. Like it definitely worked for him in the short term. Uh, however, he got a back injury and he regressed. Unfortunately, this happened to me with my current hip injury. Now I struggle to progress with this type of training. So the main question is, should you follow this program? No, I don't recommend this program. The main reason is that there are other programs that will allow you to progress your squat in a safer manner. Increasing your strength can be the easy part. Avoiding injury and overcoming injury is the harder part. This program is extremely high risk. It can work in the short term, but not in the long term. There are many approaches you can take to increase your squat. Squatting twice per week works and many high level powerlifters train with that frequency. But to play devil's advocate, it's still very interesting that this approach, which goes against conventional advice, worked for me and Toshiki. And I don't think dismissing it simply because we're genetic freaks is a valid criticism. Also, I didn't use drugs following this program at 16 years old. I'd like to keep an open mind with these kind of things rather than dismiss it and call it a stupid program. It's also extremely important to mention that I didn't run this type of program back to back. There were short bursts where I squatted like this for two to five weeks. And after that, sometimes I even focus mainly on Olympic lifts for six plus months. But anyways, I certainly learned a lot from this, but nowadays I don't follow this type of programming uh, just because it's so aggressive and my hips can't handle it. Um, I definitely will injure myself uh, if I try to squat like this these days. 